So welcome to this decision session by the Executive Member for Children, Young People and Education, Tuesday the 15th of October 2019 at something after the four o'clock start time. Um, I should start the meeting by um, asking for any declarations of interest. No. Um, okay. Um, and the minutes of the last meeting. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know if officers have any um, question about the, the um, last meeting, which was concerned with the uh, still to be renamed Centre of Excellence for Disabled Children and Their Families. No. no? Yeah. In which case, um, I have no questions about that, so I'm going to sign those minutes. to public participation and that we have one person registered to speak and that is Mr Paul Kind and um, probably professor today. welcome um, you've given me a written copy of your yes. uh, remarks um, I'll just pass that briefly to um, Amanda Hatton um, to just have a quick read of as you're speaking um, and I'll leave it to you to speak. You have three minutes as usual, Mr. Kind. Well, it's not as usual. It's the uh, first time I've been to one of these meetings. I'm sorry, as usual for me. Oh, for you. Um, I want to make it clear at the beginning that I'm speaking here as a foster carer with some 40 years or so experience. Um, I have in the past been associated with uh, York, uh, with the AFCA, the York uh, uh, Association. Uh, foster carers. Um, but this is uh, an initiative that I took on myself once I, um, uh, as you probably are aware, I wrote to you earlier this year with some of this material. I'm sorry, I missed that. I wrote to you earlier this yes, year you about did. some of this. So at the, exi the, the meeting in March 19th, there was a, a replacement review report uh, presented um, and, and, and adopted. And the 21st of January, uh, prior to that, the assistant director wrote to all foster carers saying that in effect, um, as of April, the City of York will cease the automatic foster care fee increase that's historically been a link to City of York Council's employees. And this text um, uh, acknowledges the practice that had applied in New York since the beginning of what has been termed the New Deal in 2013 which um, basically linked foster carer fees to the median salary of the social worker and then allowed for the annual rises in foster carer fees to be linked to the levels agreed nationally for public sector workers. However, the March 19th report um, and the minutes of the meeting, or sorry, the report itself contained what I think was an erroneous assurance that foster carers had been consulted for 30 days on the proposals uh, in line with best HR principles, but put bluntly, there had been no such consultation. Um, a draft copy of the report was made available to the AFCA committee in October of last year, but that made no reference to alterations of foster carer fees, which had been a concern raised by several times by foster carers in face-to-face -face meetings with officers in the course of the review. And as I mentioned, you, um, I've asked previously that the record be amended to correct this factual anomaly, and I now ask that the minutes of today's meeting note that proposals in the March report to alter the 2018-19 fees were not in fact discussed with foster carers as part of the placement review. The unilateral decision to terminate the existing and accepted practice for determining fostering fees does not accord with national standards and regulations. And this was the backdrop which led ultimately to the Williamson Review, which is the subject of today's executive meeting. That report, uh, her report agrees that the description of the pre-existing arrangements for setting foster care of fees. The report records an apology made by the Director of Children's Services, but only in respect of the nature of the communication, which whilst it might have been a fault, it was the manner in which the decision was arrived at 
without consultation, it was clearly a result of deliberations. I would just say to you that you've gone over your three minutes, but I'm quite prepared to continue on the basis that you're now going to tell me what you would have said if it had been within three minutes. I see. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> fine. Maybe that's why I provided the copy so that you would have that. Um, the uh, Williamson review did not address the pivotal issue of determining the monetary value of foster care as professional work, which was the basis of the New Deal. This, this uh, setting the maximum uh, foster care fee in this way at a level to other relevant professionals, such as social workers, provides one set of practical solution. But of course, there may be other options, for example, linking foster care fees to scale points on the CYC APTC rates with corresponding uplift, lifted, uplift linkage to locally operated payables. This will require additional partnership working beyond simple consultation, and it will be useful to have your views as to how such, view, such work could be commissioned. The recommendation for the Council to set out a clear framework for consultation and communication is of course welcome, but it's explicit in the existing standards and regulations. The key substantive point as to how foster care fees should be decided requires additional action beyond the Williamson Report, and I ask you to explore this further with the Director of Children's Services. The acknowledgement that current fees for new carers of less than £10 a day are pitifully low invites a more detailed assessment on a systematic approach to planning the fostering workforce. In conclusion, it's imperative that all parties concerned can move forward in a constructive partnership. With that in mind, we all need to be open to a discussion of the recent changes introduced as part of the placement review. In a year's time, how will we, any of us know whether those changes have delivered desirable outcomes unless there are specific goals and objectives with quantifiable indicators? Sorry, Sophie. This is, this is, I know this is a trap. There are kind of you've heard this before many times. We cannot simply focus on managing a budget overspend. There must be evidence that the review actually delivers on its stated goals. That means foster carers and officers jointly assessing the impact and effectiveness of both the placement review and the Williamson report. So would the executive member therefore commit to receiving such an assessment 12 months from now? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, I know this is an important subject for you and for other people, which is why um, I allowed you to make your Thank remarks you. in two parts. Um, and I felt it was important to listen to them. Um, I don't know if either uh, Amanda Hatton or Sophie Kibble would like to say anything at this point. Uh, in response to Mr. Cairns' remarks, but I do have one or two thoughts I'd like to offer. Um, I'll pick mine up as, as we introduce the report. Okay, in which case, thank you. Would you like then to introduce the report, one yep. or the other of you, and we'll respond to the points that... I think we'll be able to respond to all the points in some form, Mr. Cairns. So the report that you've got in front of you today is the outcome of an independent review um, of the decision that was made to remove the link as, as previously described. Um, it's important to be clear that the review was jointly specified between ourselves and YAFCA. So we agreed the specification as to what the review would look at and how the review would move forward. Um, and what you have are the recommendations for the review before you in... in section three of the report and the recommendation from us as officers is that we accept all of the recommendations of the, the independent review. Um, independent review had extensive consultation with, with foster carers both within YAFCA and, and other foster carers and has come up with a series of what I think are, are comprehensive recommendations in terms of uh, an effective working relationship moving forward and picks up some of the issues in terms of the uplift for, for those that are some of the lowest paid of, of our foster carers at the, at the current time. So recommendations listed in point three, um, which is page five going over onto page six. 
So a clear framework for consultation and communication. Um, communication strategy for future development. I think it's really important to say that Sophie, as Assistant Director and the Chair of YAFCA, have had some very positive conversations about how, how things can move forward. Um, Council to consider the uplift for those foster carers on level one and two, which would strengthen recruitment and recognise that they, they are relatively lowly funded compared to other carers. It is important to note that we have very generous foster carer rates for our higher level carers, that we'll have an annual conference for foster carers. We had an education conference um, earlier this year with foster carers, um, teachers and social workers, and that was very positive. So we'd want to build on the success of that and, and move forward. To think about how YAFCA can continue to extend its reach into all foster carers and support positive working relationships. We do, of course, support our new carers to have YAFCA information and leaflets. Um, and to think about what our long-standing awards for, for foster carers look like that are non-monetary. And I think it's important on that point to um, feed back on Show Me I Matter, so our Care Leavers Council and Show Me I Still Matter, our Care Leavers Council and Children in, in Care Council, who we met with on Monday night who were talking about how we recruit foster carers. And they are very keen for the non-monetary awards of foster care to be the things that are the primary motivators of foster caring. They struggle with us talking about money for foster carers. They recognise that it's important that foster carers are supported financially, but they want the motivation to, be, to foster carer to be about the non-monetary awards of that. So I think that fits with what the young people are telling us, as well as what the independent review is telling us. Else to add, no, thank you. Mm. Thank you. Um, in terms of the history, um, I feel that um, I should, uh, since we've uh, recognised the fact that um, the proposal to unhitch was not actually communicated, but was improperly represented in the minutes. I think we should correct that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, I want to address the points that uh, Mr Kind has raised. Um, that's the first one. Um, so I think I'm, uh, I'll, make, I'll, I'll make an appropriate correction to that. Okay. Um, secondly, in terms of alternative models of reimbursement, um, I think that the uh, framework that's been proposed um, by um, Audrey Williamson in paragraph uh, point 10 of your notes, Mr Kind, um, that's the recommendations to set out a clear framework, yeah. which we've already accepted. Yeah. I think that should be dealt with under that yeah. uh, point. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm saddened to note your comment about the low remuneration for the, the uh, early um, foster carers, levels one and two. Um, I'm not clear what Yafka's view of them was in the past, but somehow or another we've achieved a situation where there's quite a wide disparity between levels one, two and three, and I'm sure that that can be addressed. It's been partially addressed by the proposed uplift, but I think that maybe we can make some more positive changes in the future. That will depend on the exact nature of the what is proposed by way of decisions on uplifts, fees and allowances. Okay. Um, in terms of your point 11 about an evaluation of the changes resulting from the placement review and Walter Williamson's review based on quantifiable measures of outcome, um, I think that should, that should be considered in line with the um, consultation, communication and future decisions. And I'll say why, because I think the question of a monetary value of a foster carer is, it's not a paid employment. Um, I did have an email from one of your colleagues saying that we are council workers and as somebody who is also remunerated by council um, on slightly different terms, I have to say, no, we are not council workers, neither are foster carers. 
And, and I do believe that what was said quite clearly by the young people at last night show that our matter panel really should resonate around this table. It does with me. I'm a poor relation to a foster carer. I'm just a stepdad. But looking after somebody else's children has been both a pleasure and a bit of a burden for me at various times in the last 30 odd years. So um, I think that that point should be raised in connection with that review, the annual review. Would it be in order to just to encourage us to think a little bit carefully about um, the message from young people, which I have heard before, they're concerned about money intruding, if you like, on the relationship that they want to have with yeah. foster carers. But the elephant in the room is recruiting and retaining foster carers. And it's, I think, a, a, almost an impossibility to envisage yeah. how you will get foster carers through the door to, by way of recruitment, mm. but also to retain them yeah. over a significant period of time, grow them. I mean, for goodness sake, I'm at the end of my um, working life as a foster carer, but we are struggling to, to achieve that. Mm. And I think we do have to look at what we pay foster carers by way of reimbursement as co-professionals. And, you know, uh, that, that's, that's an issue that yeah. you suggest to me that this is not simply a matter of consultation and a bit of toing and froing between foster carers and through the AFCA and, and, and the department, but it will need a piece of some fairly profound thinking to address the, exactly the point you're making. How do we get that balance between yeah. monetary and non-monetary? How do we provide sufficient incentive for people to want to recruit, uh, to be mm -hmm. recruited, and once recruited, how do we train them? And it's not simply a matter of training and support. It is also, regrettably, a matter of the real world and money. Yeah. OK. Um, take those, we take those points on board. I think um, Amanda Hatton has got a, a comment to on. Can I just say, this, it's not a discussion session. No, no, I understand. I'm, 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 I'm sorry to give you. you the opportunity to respond. Yes, thank Come you. Sure. Yeah, and I think, I think the point raised earlier in terms of how will we know we've made a difference I mean, if you look at point six of the of the report, we've got a number of measures there that are absolutely the measures we've just started to talk about. Placement stability, um, you know, so are our children stable in, in the homes that they are living in? And it's important to talk about them as homes, because that's what the children want to talk about them. How are we doing on foster care recruitment and how are we doing on foster care and retention? Absolutely, as you said. There is a body of national research around what is effective in terms of recruitment and retention of foster carers, and it is a mixture of different things. But crucial to that is the way that we reach out to communities who don't see themselves as potential foster carers. <coughs> so we have um, additional resource going into the service this year, which was agreed by, by the, the new administration, to look at digital markets in a different way of attracting people who are currently unrepresented in the foster care, the foster care community, which is really important and really positive. We also know that a fast response is what makes a difference. So if you talk to foster carers about why they become agency foster carers rather than local authority foster carers, it's often because the minute they express an interest, somebody talks to them quickly about it. So that's really important Absolutely. and we need to get better at that. But the thing that makes the, the biggest impact in terms of people's uh, belief that they can foster and desire to continue to foster is really good work, working relationship for the social workers. So all the work we're doing about stability in the social work team, so you know each other and they know the children, which is really, really important. But also around what support do you get and what support do you get out of hours, what support do you get in terms of networking and, and that kind of support around when you've got a young person who, who is behaving differently to other young people you might have cared for before. And that's certainly part of the offer and certainly part of how we would want to work going forward is thinking about what does that support package look like? Because we do absolutely want people from all over York who want to care for the children of York so that we can have as many children as need a placement have a placement in York and have the right placement. We can have a choice of placements and we can match children to placements because that's clearly where we want to be as a, as a fostering service. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Sophie, do you want to say 
something about the um, um, recruitment of new foster carers. So what we are doing differently is, as Amanda's outlined, we are having a, a new approach which will involve significantly more social media and a digital campaign. Uh, so we are going to go to, through a procurement process to find a provider who will be able to do that for us. And we're going to take on board the views of our young people around what that campaign should focus on. So what they've been talking to us about is wanting people who are going to care for them and who want to look after them as the primary motivation. So we're going to need to make sure that we're able to capture those people within York so that we are able to look after most of our young people in in York when it's the right thing for them. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for your two sets of comments. Um, so in the lines of um, the options to um, as, as to the recommendation, I do adopt the independent recommendations in full. I will make a correction to the report presented on March the 19th about the con previous consultation relating to fees and allowances. Um, I would like to express the wish that alternative models of reimbursement and an evaluation of both the placement and Williamson reviews be part of the follow-up procedure in terms of the framework for consulting on um, fees and allowances. Um, and I hope that that will um, give us a way forward for the future because um, apart from those, first the first minor issue, the uh, implementation of the independent report is being carried out in full. Um, and I decide accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Kine, for coming. Thank you. Thank you for your forbearance. Uh, it's okay. Oh, sorry. I need to make an observation. The figures in the report for level one and level two foster carers are, I think, slightly wrong. I should recall this. The level two difference per carer per annum is £176.80 and not £174.64. And the difference for a level one foster carer per annum is £66.56 and not £66.35, which means that the total differences for all carers at that level in the right-hand column is correct at 1592 for level 2, but should be 1997 for level 1. And I'm sorry that those mistakes had occurred. Yeah, I thought we'd change that. Yes. Apologies for that being there. I didn't... I didn't realise that that was still there until I got my calculator out. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.